Hey everyone. So in today's video, we're going to be doing a titration question, and I've got my apparatus with me. I'll be trying my best to show you each and everything that we need to do while we're doing the titration. So let's get started with it. First thing, you have a burette with you. So this is what the burette looks like. I'm just taking it away from the camera so you guys can see the whole length of it. This is what a burette looks like. You can see the whole length of it. Then, few things important. This is the burette stand that the burette has been clamped on. You have this uh, tap of the burette with you that you need to be um, using eventually. You have a white tile. We'll look at it. We'll look into it. Why we need a white tile for us? Then some other pieces of apparatus can include a conical flask. Uh, conical because it is conical in shape. We will be using a pipette. So we have a pipette with us, and we have a safety bulb, also known as the pipette filler, with us. So I'll be explaining how to use that also. So these are two also important apparatus that we will be using. Then I've got a beaker with me. A beaker is never for basically transferring or measuring uh, volumes. It is just for waste. So it is just for collecting your waste and then you can eventually throw it out. I've gotten with me a uh, funnel. We will be using it also. Now things to keep in mind, when you're doing a titration, in a titration basically you are using two liquids both of those are mostly colorless unless it is kind of a potassium manganate or iodine kind of liquid. So both of them are more or less colorless, right? And for colorless liquids, we will be using a chemical known as an indicator. So I will be using an indicator also. This titration is pretty simple because it is our first interaction with lab apparatus. So I am using these two liquids, you can see the names, one of them is sodium hydroxide and other is hydrochloric acid. So I will be using these two also. Now just to have the view clear, I am putting them back over here and I will be telling you step by step guide for doing a titration. Number one, when you want to fill your burette, the first thing you do is you wash it with distilled water. I've got a distilled water with me, so when you have a sink available, it's easier for you to wash it. But right now what I'm doing it, the way I'm doing it, is I will be just filling my burette with distilled water from top of it. So you can't, let me put it a little lower. So what I just do is, I just fill my burette with distilled water. I will be trying to show you a few important things, so I will be bringing the burette closer to you and then you can have a look at it. Now there are three important knobs on your burette. The first is this one that you can twist. When you twist it, you can see that the claws of the burette are opening up, which means this is exactly how you open it up and then you can take it out, then you can take it back and then you can again twist it so these jaws you can see basically these ones they have to go back and clamp into each other so you will be twisting it so that these jaws close up and now your burette is fixed now if i could show you my burette is really lower and now it is almost touching the white tile which is not how I want it this is not how I want it to be so I have got this other knob I am going to show it to you this is this other knob over here this other knob which is going to allow me to make sure that if I want to take my burette closer towards me or away from me I can use it like this then I've gotten one more knob over here I have to rotate this again there's this one more knob at the back when I twist it this whole thing can move up or down like this 
with the help of this knob and then I can tighten up, tighten it up so I have my burette ready. I can still see that my burette's nozzle is touching the white tile which is not how I want it to be. So I will twist this again and the jaws will open up so I can now place my burette a little higher. I also want you to have a closer look towards the readings of how the readings show up. If I would show you the readings, you can see that the readings are going downwards. So it's a 22, 23, 24, 25. If you could have even a further closer look, you can see, let me, yeah, zoom it in, yeah. So you can see that for example, at 33, then there's 34, then 35, 36. You have 10 units from 33 till 34. There is clearly 10 units over here. So the burette has been divided from 0 to 50. And then between each unit, there's a further division of 10 units. So you can count till 0.1 also, 0.1 cm cube also. It could be, for example, over here, the first one would be 33.1, 33.2, 33.3, 33.4, 33.5. And then you can go on 33.6, 33.7, 33.8, 33.9, and then 34. But you have an error margin of plus minus 0.5, which means you always quote your values till two decimal places. Either it can be 33.10 or 33.15. And now we can continue with the titration. So let's begin. Over here, I have a conical flask with me. I will be showing you how to use the conical flask. Last time I had filled my burette with distilled water. So the purpose of filling the distilled water is that let me unclamp it again. Like this is what I do with the unclamping. Thing to keep in mind is that in this nozzle, in this nozzle, you don't want any air bubble. So I wouldn't want any air bubble. You can see there's a small air bubble, air bubble over here. I wouldn't want this. So I will take my beaker underneath and then I will be opening the tap to make sure that any of the air bubble passes through. So when I will be opening the tap, the water will pass. And when the water passes now, there is no air bubble. You can see there is literally no hindrance over here. So while you wash it with distilled water or you rinse it with your chemical, you kind of get rid of all the air bubbles. I'm placing it back into the clamp like this. It now has been clamped also. You can see it has enough height on top of the white tile. Let me take it further away from you so you can see it. And let me change the angle of this also. You have to see that there should be enough space between the end of the nozzle and the white tile so your, your conical flask can easily fit in because you will be working with the tap also and working with the conical flask at the same time. So moving on. Now I have to rinse my burette with the liquid. So I am placing sodium hydroxide. I will be using the funnel, I will place the funnel on top of my product, you can't see it as we see. So I will just lower it for you. The funnel has been placed on top of the burette. And then you will just fill the liquid over here. Make sure when you are filling it, you check if your burette is not leaking. So no, not my, my burette is not leaking. The initial level of the liquid should preferably be 0 0.00 cm cube. Let me see, let, let, let's rewind this idea that we need two decimal places. So I will set my current. If there is more liquid than 0 0.00, so I will take my beaker which is right over here. I will open the tap. I will allow all the liquid to pass through until it is at 0 0.00. It can be more than 0 0.00 but there is no possibility of less than 0 0.00. Now I am bringing the burette closer to you and then you will tell me what's the initial value. So let me bring the burette closer to you. 
For example, if you can notice the initial level, it is definitely not 0, 0.00. It is somewhere below 0, 0.5 and 0, 0.6. And then it is 0, 0.75. So it is below the line of 0, 0.7. So it's not 0.70, it is 0.75. Moving on. Now I will be filling my conical flask with the hydrochloric acid. So for that, I need a prepared filler and the prepared, which is going to be transferring 25.0 cm cube from the region bottle into the conical flask. So for that, we need to understand how we use the uh, prepared filler. So let's, let's get into it. A closer look will show you that the prepared filler is this bulb. It has this A for apple on top of it and then it has this E for elephant and then a S over here. I think it is visible in the light, yeah. So there's an E over here, there's a S over here and there's an A for apple over here. Before you fix your pipette filler on the pipette, you need to be careful of a few things. You will take the A for apple between your finger, like index finger and your thumb and then you will squeeze this entire bulb, evacuating all the air possible. Then, let me show you again by the way, let me show this thing again. You will place this A for apple between your finger, index finger and your thumb and you will squeeze the hell out of it. And now it looks like this. Only then you fix it on the pipette, but you don't fix it really like banking it. You will just place it a little softly and then twist it to place it well on it. Now E for elephant is to is for exit and S is for suction. So you will go to your region bottle. You open, you remove the lid, you place the tip into the region bottle and then you press S for suction. So when you press S for suction, the liquid will start moving up. And when the liquid keeps on moving up, you have to make sure that the tip does not come outside of the liquid. And then when you're almost there, let me bring it closer to you and let me show you what's about to happen. Let me keep the direct like beaker with me. You can clearly see that the level of the liquid, the lower meniscus, is a little higher. I don't want it, so I can have the option of pressing E for elephant, and then when I, when I press E for elephant, it goes down. So let me bring it back. Now, when I press E for elephant, I have to be very careful about it, and now the lower level, the lower meniscus is almost there. So now I will place this burette which has now gotten 25 cm cube liquid in it. I will press E for elephant so that all the liquid gets transferred into the conical slot. This is my conical slot, this is my prepared. Now I am transferring the liquid over here. When the liquid is transferred, there is one way you can make sure that all the liquid has been removed and all the liquid has gotten into the conical slot. I will show you that also. Then you can see that on the tip of the pipette filler, there's some liquid over here. So you take your conical flask, you tilt it, and on the base of the conical flask, you tap the tip of the pipette filler. This way, the liquid gets to a minimum. During this way, minimum liquid is left over, and then you can begin your diversion. So I will put it here, I will place 2 to 3 drops of indicated, since it was an acid, the methyl orange indicator is turned into red, I will place my uh, conical flask under the red. I will twist the tap and the liquid will start flowing down. I will have to make sure that my uh, dominant hand is used to sort the conical flask and then I can make sure that the tap is also under my control. The first titration is always called as the rough titration because you are not very clear about where will the value come at. So it turned yellow. 
see it did turn yellow and let me show you at what value turned yellow so you can clearly tell me what the value should be this is my value so you can clearly see it is not 26 it is underneath 26 so 27.1 then 27.20 you can see it is at 27.25 by the way it's a little less than 20 so 27.25 so once you're done with your first iteration you can repeat the iteration by throwing it into a waste container you rinse it with distilled water so you take distilled water you add distilled water in it you swirl it and then you throw it you do this two to three times with a little distilled water each time so your conical flask is ready for under titration um, in the next video we will be doing an actual titration and then we will jump to gravimetric analysis stay tuned guys thanks